Hi, welcome to Pennsylvania Newsmakers. And as always, thanks for watching. Well, we expect a busy and exciting new year, uh, particularly in the legislature and with Governor Corbett. And then we have the new Auditor General of the state, Eugene DePasquale. We're gonna find out what's he gonna be up to in his first couple of months in office. All of that and more, Pennsylvania politics and government in depth and in detail. And guess what? It all starts right now. This is Pennsylvania Newsmakers, a fast-paced, unrehearsed weekly discussion with and about the leaders who shape your world. And now, here's your host, Terry Madonna. All right, welcome back to the program. Well, we're going to get right to it. We're expecting a full year, lots of issues before the legislature and the governor to help us sort all, all of that out is Dave D Taylor. He's the executive director of the Pennsylvania Manufacturers Association and, and Gene Barr. He's the president and CEO of the Pennsylvania Chamber of, of Business and Industry. These chambers, you know, every chamber you have sort of something different in the title, different. right? Just but you all you do toes, the same Terry. thing. Just keeps you on your toes. And David, Terry. you just guys just have one <laughs> name, but you guys have like every, at any rate. All right. Gene Barr, I want to start with you. Look into the crystal ball. If the first big thing you think the Pennsylvania legislature and the governor ought to take up is what? Well, ought to take up or will? I think those are two different ones. Oh, but let, good way to put it. Let's say two or three that, and I'm not sure of the exact order. One of them is transportation. And in order to get transportation done, it's going to, have to be done in the first six months. You know, of course, the governor announces his proposal for his budget early in February. You've got that. And a key piece of that is going to be pensions because those amounts mm -hmm. of money are so huge and are taking an increasingly large amount of Pennsylvania's budget. Those are things that have to be addressed early on. And I think you're going to see a lot of discussion around the whole LCB, privatization, mm -hmm. and beer and wine and convenience and supermarkets, hopefully, as well. All right, we're going to, I want to get into this, a little few of the specifics of that. Your top two, three list. Uh, it all begins and ends with the budget. And Governor Corbett sticking to his uh, ongoing efforts to make state government actually live within its means. Uh, the, the, the bill is coming due for many things that have uh, uh, been incurred in past years. Uh, but Governor Corbett and his team are holding fast to his mm -hmm. pledge not to raise taxes. And, uh, uh, you know, especially with, you know, the down economy, making Pennsylvania families and businesses uh, send more cash to Harrisburg. So it's going to be really challenging to live within the parameters of the actual revenue coming into Harrisburg. But the fact is that two consecutive budgets, no tax hikes, less spending this year in this year's budget than last year. Do either of you expect a, pro a problem? The Republicans control both houses of the legislature. Well, there, there won't be new general taxes, will there? No, I don't see those. I mean, the problem is, as we had hinted at, which is the increasing amount of money that pensions are taking out of Pennsylvania's right. budget. And that's clearly an issue the governor has identified. Two billion, I think, coming and up. And it goes up right? each year as we go. It Something goes like to that. three, to four, to five. These right. are huge amounts of money out of a budget that's still in the neighborhood of $28 billion, and, and that that's the, going to have to be accounted for. Right. The, the growth in, in pension obligations is equal to or greater than just the natural growth of the economy and the new money that would be available yeah. to meet existing needs. So yeah. it's going to be very hard. Yeah. The, the, let's, let's stay on pensions a minute, and I always have to say this as a former professor at Millersville University. I'm in the state pension system, so we're, mm -hmm. you know, full disclosure on this program. We don't hide anything. All right, but let's talk about that for a minute. I had the governor on a couple weeks ago. We were talking about this. And 401k plan, let's just say, okay, that the legislature, not getting into whether it's good or bad, say the legislature does that. The problem, as I see it, is the debt now, the unfunded mm -hmm. liability now, which is pushing $41 billion, right? right. David, yeah, forty-one billion dollars. So, higher. how do you get a handle on that problem? You can't reduce, and the governor's not, not interested in reducing benefits for people in the system. Now, how do you get a handle on that? Well, uh, I mean, one idea that I've heard would be uh, for people who are uh, uh, current employees who are younger and who would not be uh, 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 receiving their pensions for some years to have some kind of a trade-off to say, well, we'll buy out. Uh, that future obligation, the future increase now for uh, for yeah. for some kind of cash. How about 
new employees would pay more. I hear that, you know, the employees kick in something, the employer, for a couple years, the employer didn't pay anything. I thought that was short-sighted. Employers paid nothing. Well, you yeah. know, and that's ahead. part of the problem that we've run into with all this talk about, geez, you know, the governor cut education spend. In reality, he didn't. Last year, yeah. we spent more money on basic ed than we ever have. Part of that reality is, the administration decided we're going to live up to our obligations to put money into the pension system. Right. But here's the real problem with Pennsylvania's pensions. Years ago, the private sector largely went away from what we've got here in Pennsylvania for PCERs and, and SIRs, That's which a is a defined teacher, benefit. The teachers yes, and, the, the state and the state employees. Go ahead. State employees, exactly. Uh, we've largely gone away from that and gone to a defined contribution. And the problem is this. Uh, we'd all love to have that. The problem is we have systems that are based on 60, 50 year old demographics. We used to, somebody would retire, we'd pay them for seven or eight years on average. Now they retire, we pay them for 10, 15, 20 right. years on average. That system is not sustainable. Okay. We've got to find a system that's sustainable. All right, we're going to, when we come back, uh, we've talked a lot about transportation. I'm going to skip over that for the time being. Sure. I'm going to talk about this liquor store, okay. sell the liquor stores, privatize aspects of it, do more with beer and, and wine would it be outside, you know, make it more available outside of the, of the current system that we have. We'll talk about that and more after these words. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the Pennsylvania Chamber of Business and Industry, the statewide voice of business, and by the Pennsylvania Business Council Education Foundation, educating citizens and business leaders about important public policy issues and civic affairs. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by BetterSaferRoads.com. To voice your support for safer highways and less traffic congestion, visit BetterSaferRoads.com. And by the Pennsylvania Manufacturers Association. Business in Pennsylvania is our business. Hi, welcome back to the program with David Taylor and Gene Barr. We're chatting about the agenda. We're taking the business community's look at that. David, let me turn to you now. Liquor control, we've had, what, at least two governors three times to try to sell off the liquor stores, privatize them, not work. Tell me, do, are you, do you think it's, it could occur uh, early in this new session? I believe that it could, uh, primarily because, uh, as was we said before, the budgetary pressures this year are going to be very intense. And if there's a way to, you know, to auction off a Pennsylvania Soviet-style liquor system and uh, get an influx of, you know, many hundreds of millions of dollars, who knows how much, maybe a probably a couple billion, that that would help to alleviate immediate needs. Mm -hmm. The challenge, of course, is that um, we need to keep the conversation focused on, on wine and spirits under the state monopoly because you start getting the beer issues involved. You, you have multiple dynamics, uh, including yeah. bars and beer distributors who are you know, perfectly legitimate, in many cases small family-owned businesses whose uh, business model is predicated on the parameters Selling of state law. six packs or whatever it is. Yeah. Gene, talk about that a little bit. I know it's something you know a lot about. Well, I don't know if I know a lot about it. I'm just kind of like any don't other consumer. Don't, 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 don't be immodest <laughs> Well, You do know a good bit about it. Go ahead. Here's, here's I think, the reality in days, right? I think it is an issue that's going to come up. And the reality is, as we've talked before about how people in Pennsylvania view this, yes, it's important to privatize our state store system because the private sector sells tobacco, you know, we sell pharmaceuticals, think we can do a tremendous job and a safe job selling alcohol as well. But I think the consumers of Pennsylvania also want convenience. To a certain degree, it doesn't matter to them who employs the person behind the counter. Mm -hmm. They want to be able to go into their convenience store, their supermarket, as they do in dozens of other states and purchase products conveniently. And I've heard, you know, Senate and House leadership talk about this. The governor's talked about greater convenience for Pennsylvania's consumers. I think it's time has come. Yeah. Dave's right. We've got to figure out how we make this work across Pennsylvania with the diverse elements, but we've got to bring yeah. Pennsylvania into the 20th century yeah. on alcohol. Yeah, and typically <laughs> that's not been a strictly Democratic-Republican issue. I mean, you often have a lot of rural Republican lawmakers who are concerned about the expansion of alcohol sure. into their communities. 
you labor, organized labor, which doesn't want it. It's one of those issues that does find, you know, a strange configuration of bedfellows, right? I think yeah. the resistance of rural Republicans is much less now. I think, less I now think than that, it was that, earlier. In, in years gone by. I yeah. think that uh, that people are more mobile and that uh, that the outside world is closer in. So I think primarily this is a this is a union issue. Before I let you you go, let uh, let's talk a little bit about. Uh, a tort reform. Yep. I know, you know, stay with me. I know your eyes sort of glaze <laughs> legal over. Legal reform. Lost legal abuse, reform. Right. Lost. Oh, that, that, yeah, they like that term better, but yeah. go ahead. Well, I mean, Pennsylvania made a very important step forward uh, with the, the Fair Share Act to ending the deep pockets rule of joint and several liability. But that's only a first step. There are many uh, uh, laws, things that are standard practice in competitor states uh, where Pennsylvania is way out of line and that the business community in particular is going to be looking to make progress on those issues in this session. Yeah, tra translation on deep pockets means that if a company has a certain percentage of damage, they would pay that damage, not be liable for the right. entire but, amount. But they, but it's proportional to the to level, of level of responsibility rather responsibility. than going Go on ahead. a fishing expedition for uh, somebody just because Go they ahead. have money. And Dave's right. What was done on joint several is absolutely crucial. The reality is other states have made advances as well, and Pennsylvania has yeah. not advanced what has historically been a very poor legal climate. Right. We have issues such as venue, that is where the cases are heard. I've got members who find themselves in Philadelphia Common Pleas Court for absolutely no reason whatsoever, and that has to change. We have to have a system that makes sense to people, and unfortunately in Pennsylvania we have to make some strides in order to get yeah. that system set up. All right, before I let you go, I want to ask you, uh, look, the last two years we've had state budgets Controversial, particularly mm -hmm. for the cuts that Governor Corbett recommended to education that were restored by Republicans mm -hmm. and human services, county human services restored. Right. It, it, put your crystal ball on, sure. you know, this show will air about, you know, airs a little bit, maybe a month or so before the governor's yes. big address to the legislature. You think we're going to have steep cuts recommended this year? You think the governor's going to say, let's just keep steady as she goes. The governor is going to hold the line. The governor is going to find a way hold to live within his mean, the means of the taxpayers and to, uh, uh, to stand by his but word. But would you expect the kind of cuts he recommended four years ago? I think two, it depends I'm sorry, on last year. what they're projecting for their revenue. The reality is this, and let's look at this. These programs, there's not a bad program. Any program that's wasteful and abusive has been tossed. They have some tough decisions to make about right. this. And this governor has said, I'm going to match our expenditures to our revenues, and I'm not going to call on the, pe the people of Pennsylvania for more taxes. Had he done that, we'd be paying fa average family for about $1,200 more right, a year in right. PIT. He decided he wasn't going to do that. All right, well, look, great, great update. All right, talking about waste, fraud, and abuse, we got, we got a guy who's going to be responsible for ferreting all that out, the new Auditor General of the state, Eugene DeBosquale. He's my guest after these words. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is brought to you by Pennsylvania Credit Union Association. Pennsylvania Credit Unions, where people are worth more than money. To find a credit union that is right for you, check out ibelong.org. And by the Energy Association of Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania's energy information source. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by the State System of Higher Education. 14 state-owned universities, the state system is the largest provider of higher education in Pennsylvania. And by the Hospital and Health System Association of Pennsylvania, working towards a healthy Pennsylvania. Hi, welcome back to the program with Eugene De Pasquale. He's the new Auditor General of the state. It's a big job. He's the fiscal watchdog. Do you like that term? What do you want to call yourself? Well, I, I, well let's be very clear. When I'm at home, I do not get called General. Oh, uh, yeah, uh, I'm uh, sure General uh, De Pasquale, uh, that's the not fiscal even, watchdog. We it's won't not an get option into at home, one. right? I got it. I got yeah. it. <laughs> Wonderful. All right, let's let's be a little. Let's talk a little bit now. You you take you you're coming into office. You've already talked about a couple of the things that you right. want to do 
for our viewers, go through what you, what a couple of the priorities that you would have. Well, I said on the campaign, and there's really no reason to change this. I mean, there's th really three top priorities of big issues to tackle. One is on the Marcellus Shale drilling, making sure mm -hmm. the Department of Environmental Protection has the appropriate resources to do an adequate job of making sure that our drinking water is being protected. That's number one. Number two, on our job creation programs at the Department of Community and Economic Development, whether they be direct grants or tax credits, we need to find out which ones are working and which ones are not so that we're getting the biggest bang for a buck because job creation is still, even though we're starting to see some improvements, mm -hmm. but it's not nearly where we need it to be, mm -hmm. is still the number one issue. And three, the Auditor General conducts audits of all the school districts of Pennsylvania. We need to make sure, you know, we've obviously mm -hmm. had a big debate from the governor, mm -hmm. the legislature, on um, what's the appropriate amount of money that we're putting into the school districts. But we also know that some school districts are seeing better results than others. Right. We need to get into the weeds on that and find out why. Yeah. Is, it, is, it, is it a funding issue? Are there other issues that we should yeah. be tackling? So we need, to, we need to get in and find out the why there. You know, on a couple, on the one issue, you talk about the second issue about, you know, we're spending a lot of money, tax credits, and actually for a decade, for, a, you know, maybe eight, ten years, we've made a lot of investments in local communities for economic and right. community development activities that, is the question whether that has paid off or you prime, you know what I mean? We've made, couple, what, three billion, right. I'll use a figure, of investments in, in baseball stadia and convention centers. And I'm not suggesting right. they're not good, right. but how do we know whether they produce jobs? Is that what the Auditor General does? Well, that, that would be part of it on this area. But okay. I'm going to give you an example. There's two different ways to take this. One is you take the York and Lancaster baseball stadiums. <clears throat> There's actually a pretty direct correlation in new jobs that, that happens from that. That's actually pretty easy to track. What's the more challenging one to come at is when they create the tax-free zones. I or, get it. Or the tax abatement zones. Right. Are we creating new jobs there or are we shifting them from one end of mm -hmm. the county or the region to the other? Yeah. And so I could tell you, York Revolution, there were new jobs because they built the stadium. There was new construction jobs. With, with that. There's you've got to be careful here. Now you're getting into this War of the Roses stuff with <laughs> Lancaster <laughs> and York. I'm on the other side <laughs> of the river both from be treated you. They'll very <laughs> equally in this, <laughs> yes. I'm sure they yeah. will be. All right. Is, does that have to do with the, the something that was controversial and then became sort of widely accepted, the tax credit for the movie well, movie production in the well, state? Well, actually, that's one where I think, you know, at least as, as an instinct from everything I read, has shown that it actually did it create. It does produce it, jobs. It does produce yeah. jobs. But what we need to find out is, look, we're spending a lot of money on this. Right. And there is a debate, and there continues to be a debate about whether the most important driver of economic growth is having a competitive tax structure or these economic development right. programs. And I think I need to do, really get in there with economic development professionals, conduct these audits across the state, and present the governor and the General Assembly with real facts. I get it. Real information so that they can make policy does, decisions based on that and not just gut instinct. Does that have to do, I mean, when we talk about the so-called crack plan. Oh, I know. Don't go anywhere here. Out in Beaver <laughs> County, it's hugely important. Shell, Absolutely. they're going to take the uh, big issue in the Western ethylene. Part of the state. Yeah, they're going to they're going to take uh, natural gas, and eventually it gets turned into products that you can use in plastics and all. It's huge. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, we need to find out if tax credits for those. By are way. they really moving there? And that's just one example. I don't want you to no, pick no, up. No, we got it. We're just using. Are that they really moving way. there because they're getting the tax credits? Or were they going to go there anyway, and the taxpayers end up sort of over-subsidizing the deal? That's it. what we need to we need to find that out. Because when you are talking about at a minimum, you know, you can debate about right. whether it was real cuts versus flatlining education budget and human services. But when we are at least having these tough fiscal challenges on those important core right. government programs, and we're not funding transportation where we need to, when we're if we're over-subsidizing private industry that's already going to be moving to an area, right. it, that's a problem. All right, we're talking with the new Auditor General of the state, Eugene D. Pasquale. We'll be back in a moment. This broadcast of Pennsylvania Newsmakers is presented by Highmark Blue Shield, changing the way health plans work for business with a variety of plan options for employers and more choices for employees. Information is available at Highmark.com. Have a greater hand in your company's health. And by the Pennsylvania Healthcare Association, the future of long-term care.
Hey, welcome back to the program of the state's new uh, Auditor General, Eugene D. Pasquale. We're talking about a bunch of issues that his office is going to deal with. All right, uh, General, let's talk a little bit about the lottery. Now, we're taping this, so we're not quite sure what Governor Corbett will do. But you have some thoughts in principle about this, correct? About yes. Well, first of all, explain what the governor wants to do. Well, the governor is looking through, he set up a privatization commission, and they sort of came back with ideas of what state services should be privatized, and the state lottery was one of them. Now, our Pennsylvania lottery is one of the best-run lotteries in the country. It's only about 2.2% overhead, just had another record-breaking year. But again, the governor's put on the table that maybe you could get more revenue for expanding senior programs if you privatize it. A lot of concerns that people have is that it has not been an overly transparent item, and here's why that's a problem. The governor's proposal. The, gov the governor's proposal. So he's talking about, again, by either the end of this year or early in the new year, having this privatization. Now, this would be a deal that would be valued at about three and a half billion dollars. Here's why this is, imagine the state of Delaware, which their general fund budget is about 2.7 billion, being privatized without any hearings, mm -hmm. without any you know, transparency. So, and, so your concern would be maybe you got to have more bidders, you got to have more, uh, go ahead. Now, I, and one thing that uh, I've heard from the governor's office, and I think this is a fair point, is that this isn't like repairing a bridge where there's a hundred construction yeah. companies. I mean, there's only so many private companies that do this, but it should be concerning that there's only one bidder, if for nothing else, at the state, if you want to get the best bang for your How buck you know? in a deal, you want to at least have some level of a negotiation, and if, and if they believe that the governor is totally committed to the privatization mm. and they're the only bidder, I don't know how you negotiate a tough deal there. Yeah, yeah well, the, yeah, and how do you know what's fair? How right. do you know what's fair to the taxpayers right. right. of the state? Yeah, I always thought that was true. I don't know if you, uh, uh, Gen General De Pasquale was a member of the legislature before he, well, he still is now, he takes office on the 15th of January. But you know, when they talked about privatizing the turnpike, it's not like they had 3,000 people who right. were trying to figure out, you Correct. know, about private. Is that the same concern? It's the same concern. Uh, I mean, the, there's one different element to this, net is these programs are, you know, the Pennsylvania Lottery is the only country in the United States that all the proceeds benefit senior programs. Right. And that is a promise from the Pennsylvania state government sure. towards Pennsylvania seniors. So if you get into a situation where the company fails to meet its obligations, mm -hmm. we're going to have to find a way to meet those services. So if I, it, you know, when I'm Auditor General, if this does go through, one of my jobs is to make sure that that contract is operating the way it is intended to and the seniors are getting the benefits that they are entitled to under Pennsylvania law. Yeah. Now, one of the things that uh, your predecessor did a good bit about was looking at the Department of Public Welfare and fraud and waste and abuse in some of these programs. you consider that a priority, too? Absolutely. And one of the things that he really targeted, which I think needs to continue, is making sure that the individual who is supposed to get the benefit is the one getting yeah. it. They're making sure that's that, the problem, that, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, look, there's some people, obviously, that want to get rid of all the benefits, but that's not the majority of people. The majority of people say, if you're down on your luck, sure. or you have some physical disability or mental challenge, we want to help you get back on your feet. Or in yeah. some instances, if it's a, obviously a mental or a physical disability, maybe obviously a longer period of time, making sure the one that is getting the benefit is the one it's supposed to. And so making sure that the ID check system right. at the department and at the county level is operating the way it's supposed to. Because, again, there's very few people that think, you know, when somebody has a physical disability, throw them to the right. wolves. That's not, in the, we don't do that in the United States, certainly not in Pennsylvania. That's but we do need happen. to make sure that the one that's getting it is, now, or should you, get it is. You, you got to make a promise. You're going to come back and throughout the, your four years and talk with us about the audits. Okay, one one of the bonus out. benefits We're, of being a PA resident is I'll be here often. We're done. We're done. Uh, we'll see if he gets the last word. <laughs> see you next week for another edition of Pennsylvania uh, Newsmakers. Stay well.